Hello and welcome to part 2 of the RPP demonstrations. In this video I will be covering subrings. If you missed out on part 1, please click the hyperlink in the video. The diagram shows an example of an RPP network with a main ring and a subring. You can see the switch roles in the RPP rings and the switches that link the two rings together are actually ha now have different roles. There is the, uh, the edge and the assisted edge node. The rule is that if you have switches that are a member of multiple rings, there is one edge node and all the other switches become assistant edge nodes. And then in the subring you have the master node and optionally the, uh, the additional transit nodes. So if you create subrings, there is always one switch that does not intersect with other rings. So this can be the master node. All other switches in the subring become transit nodes. So the concept of subrings is very simple and straightforward. RPP also has the concept of domains. A domain consists of at least one ring and optionally additional subrings. So you can have multiple rings in a single domain. The reason for having a domain is that you can separate the control and you can also have different instances attached to different domains. So mind you, it's only one instance per domain. If you want more information about instances, please refer to my first video covering RRPP. Now the configuration of a subring is not that different than configuring an RRPP main ring. The difference is in the roles that you are assigning to the switches for the intersecting part. In the example that is also used in part 1, you can actually keep the configuration of the main ring. There are no changes at all. The only thing you have to do is add a new subring and assign the appropriate roles. So let's guide you through the configuration and start with the edge node. If you look at the diagram, you see that the edge switch has three ports that relate to the rings. Two of these ports are already a member of the main ring and there is a third port connecting to the subring. Now this is where the RPP edge port configuration comes in. If we add the subring, you can see that if we configure the node mode as edge, we have to assign an edge port, which will be the port that is used for the subring. And you'll see that if we configure the edge. Okay, so we've got our edge switch here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first create a VLAN and then we are going to assign that VLAN to uh, Gigabit Ethernet port 105 which is going to be the, uh, the edge port as you can see in the diagram. Five. Set it to trunk. And what we also have to do is we have to disable spanning tree in order for the board to be able to run in RPP. Okay, now let's go to the RPP domain. And we'll create a new subring where we set the node, po the, the, the node mode to edge. Node mode edge. And now to the question mark you can see I have to set an edge port which will be my gig ethernet 105 and ring to enable and that is basically it for the configuration of the edge node Let's save it and that's it now for the assistant edge node uh, the, co the configuration is almost the same, so the main difference is, is that we have to set the node mode to assistant edge. Other than that, it's it's exactly the same as the uh, as the edge node. So let's start configuring, create the VLAN, and go to the edge port interface. We'll set the port link type to trunk. Assign the VLAN and disable spanning tree. Okay, and 
and now create the ring. Ring two, node mode, assistant edge, and then the edge port is gigabit Ethernet one zero five. And then we enable the ring. Save it. And that's it for the assistant edge. Now did you notice something whilst configuring the edge nodes? So so where's the primary secondary port configuration? Well the answer is very simple. Um, the the subring will take the primary secondary port configuration from the main ring. So if you check out the diagram you can see that the edge ports don't really have a role as primary secondary but more like a transit role. The primary secondary port configuration on the main ring can be used for the configuration of the primary and secondary ports on the subring. So let's check out the subring configuration. I will go through the complete configuration of the master and transit node of the subring. So and, and again, I can't say it often enough, RPP, for RPP it's important that you prepare well. So make sure you have a clear diagram that describes all the ports and port rows. This will minimize the errors. So first we'll go to the master node of the subring. Okay, so the master node of ring 2. So what we're going to do is we are going to create VLAN 10 first and we will be assigning VLAN 10 to the access port. Let's get interface 1010. That's VLAN 10. And we will be configuring the ring ports now. So interface gig 101 link type trunk permit VLAN 10 and disable spanning tree and we're going to do the same on gig interface 2 trunk and okay uh, so now we're going to create the RPP domain. Uh, let's let's enable RPP first. Enable. So RPP domain one, and we are going to set the control VLAN and the protected VLAN reference. Because we're using the same domain, it has to be the same control VLAN and protected VLAN reference. So control VLAN 4092 and protected. VLAN reference zero, so we're using instance zero. Okay, so uh, and now we're going to create a ring, a ring two node mode uh, master. Okay, primary port. You can see that the primary port is gig one hundred one, and the secondary port is gig. Now remember in the first video I talked about the level. Uh, so level 0 is the main ring and level 1 is the subring. So for a subring we have to assign value 1 here because we're configuring a subring. And ring 2 enable. And that's it for the, for the master of the subring. And now the transit node of the subring. Uh, again, it's a lot of repetitive tasks here. So we create VLAN 10. Uh, we have a host connected to uh, gig interface 10. So, and uh, so this is the, uh, these are the ring ports. Okay, RPP enable. Let's just enable RPP globally. Go to the domain, set the control VLAN to 4092, and set the protected reference to 
to zero, and let's create a ring. So, uh, so this is a transit node. So we have to set the node mode to transit. Node mode transit. Primary port. If you can see it on the diagram, primary port is gig 101, and secondary port is gig 102. And again, we're dealing with a subring, so we have to set the level to one. Ring to enable. And that's it for the subring. So the subring should now be up and running. Let's check that by going to the master ring. You can see here you get a log message mastering to ring to domain one recovered. So let's do a display RPP brief. So you get the information here. And let's also do a display RPP verbose domain one to check whether the ring is complete. You can see here that the ring is complete. The node mode is set to master. And you can see that the secondary port, gig 102, is set to blocked. So the ring is up and running. And let's also check uh, the master ring one. RPP domain, uh, sorry, verbose domain one. So you can also see that the primary ring is also active and complete. So let's fire up some hosts and check the connectivity. So we've got three hosts here um, connecting to the main ring and the sub ring. So um, and they all have IP addresses, right? So let's start with this one and ping to one of the other hosts, say 12. And let's take this one. This one pings to the host in the main ring. And let's have this one pinging to the main ring as well. So you can see everything is running fine. So uh, so we want to see what happens if we break a link. So if we just go back to the diagram. So what we're going to do is we're going to break a link between the edge and the assistant edge node. Um, this seems to happen most, uh, this seems to be like a crucial link. And so let's see what happens if we do that. So uh, we go to the edge node. And the edge node is using bridge aggregation 2. So interface bridge 2. And uh, let me just quickly fire up those again and do a shut. You can see there's absolutely no disruption here. But let's check what's happening to the rings. So you can see here that the on the master ring one, so this is my uh, main ring, uh, you can see that the ring has failed. So if I do um, display RPP verbose domain one. You can see that my ring has failed. And let's check the other one on ring two. Verbose domain one. Now you can see here is just that this ring is still complete, still up and running. So you would think that this ring would fail as well, but it's that's not true. So let's go to the diagram and check why that is. So if you check out the diagram, you will actually see that although we have uh, disabled the link between the edge and the assistant edge, we still have a ring uh, operating for the subring. So you go from the mastering to the edge to mastering one, transit ring one, assistant edge, and then back to transit ring two. So this ring is still complete. And so so for the main ring, there's a failure, but for the subring, there's actually no failure. So there you go. It's all working and not too difficult to set up. 
So in the next video I will be covering tangent rings, so stay tuned. If you have any comments or you want to like this video, please do so and have a great day.